This is Lindy. And I'm Russell. From Love Crate Celebrate. Welcome back to our channel where we share all of our DIY home renovations and budget friendly makeovers. Today we're excited to share our new pergola. This is part one of our front porch makeover. We did an entire concrete pad and a pergola and we're gonna show you what we did and break down the cost and show you all our savings. Yeah, I mean, it was a pretty big change. It was also a lot of work. <laughs> we want to thank Wagner for teaming up with us on this one. Definitely made this project possible. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button and let's dive into this project. This is the exterior of our home at the beginning of this summer. This year, we decided to tackle a bunch of projects outside. We painted the siding, even painted our windows and added a new patio door. If you want to see any of these projects, we'll include a link for the whole playlist above. We were really happy with how the exterior turned out, but we wanted to add a little bit more curb appeal by adding a front patio and pergola. So, this we have to decide size so I can start digging. This here is 11 feet. We're only gonna make the pad 10, but I wanna overdig it so that I have room to build my forms and stuff. So 10 like here, yeah. and then all the way to the end here. So we'll come all the way out to the house, but you want the, the pad to I think end. the pergola can come in a little bit from all the side, like. Almost centered over the window. Yeah, it should be, I think. Yeah, so nine feet is to there. So I have 10 foot posts. Okay. So then we can go up to there. I think that's a nice height, bring yeah. it out 10 feet. One of the first steps we did um, before we even did any of the actual work for our patio was we did a utility locate. So you can see here we have flags, so that's our gas meter, and we have flags coming all the way around and that's showing the path of our gas line. So um, we have a depth of about three feet, so we wanna make sure that we're not digging anywhere by that, or if we are, we're doing it by hand, um, just because we don't wanna hit, this is our gas line coming into our house, so that would be bad. Um, so yeah, if you're ever digging by utilities, make sure you get them located because if you don't, it can cause huge issues. One of the first steps to our patio project is getting rid of this slab. The slab has settled, it's too small, and it's cracked all over the place, so it's garbage. This was 60 bucks to rent in a day. I can easily have it done. We had a plan for where the rough pad was gonna sit, so we grabbed the tractor to do a bunch of the heavy lifting and remove all the dirt. Because we were putting a concrete pad, we wanted to make sure the water would flow away from the house. So to do this, we sloped the pad away from the house, and the slope was a quarter inch of height for every 12 inches of distance. Our stakes and string line here show our slopes for the pad. Then we used a plate compactor to compact all the dirt to prep for the gravel. We actually rented a plate compactor over a long weekend, and this way we actually get an extra day for free. We also rented a post hole auger to auger a bunch of holes under our pergola post and also in the corners of our pad just to provide structure and also to get below the frost line to prevent any heating for the concrete slab. We added cardboard tubes to the tops of all the holes just to prevent any gravel from getting into the holes. Mm -hmm. 
we added a four inch layer of three quarter inch crushed gravel underneath our concrete pad. This allowed us to get the pad base perfectly level and sloped and also allows for drainage underneath the slab. We leveled the gravel by hand using rakes and shovels using our previous string lines as a reference. Once we were happy with the level and slope of the gravel pad, we used our plate compactor to tamp everything down. Because we were planning for five inches of concrete, we used two by sixes, which are five and a half inches tall, to make a form around the concrete pad. The next step is plastic and then rebar. So I'm gonna put some poly down in between on top of the gravel and that's what the concrete's gonna get poured onto. I'm gonna put poly down and then once the plastic is down, then we can lay rebar and tie everything up and ready for concrete. So here we go. We used a 15M rebar to reinforce our concrete slab and we place them on around an 18 to 20 inch grid throughout the pad. Once we had the grid complete, we actually used some of our old patio pavers and broke them up to act as a chair for the reinforcement to bring the rebar above the plastic so that the concrete would wrap the rebar once it's poured. We added reinforcement to all the augered holes just to add a bit more structure to our concrete pad. With all the rebar in place, we used rebar ties to tie all the intersections. All right, so we are ready to pour concrete. Um, we did a few last little things. We got some plastic up just to protect the house and door from any concrete splatter. Um, I put some expansion board, it's an asphalt impregnated board, um, just against the concrete of the house because you don't want concrete against concrete because then what can happen with any kind of movement, it will crack and spall. Um, everything is tied. I did a check. Um, I have good clearance around the mat. Kind of rule of thumb, you want to be able to put your hand around the bar like so and get your fingers underneath because you want that concrete to go around. So we use this, some old patio pavers for um, kind of a chair to hold the rebar up. Um, you also want to make sure that your rebar isn't touching the forms because you don't want the rebar to be exposed and then it can rust faster. So that I have about a good two inches um, of buffer um, around the rebar and the form face. So yeah, everything is good. Now we're just waiting for concrete. Due to the volume of our pad, which was about 3.5 cubic meters, we decided to order concrete with a truck. But if you're doing a smaller pour, you definitely could use a mixer and bag concrete and do it by hand. Once the concrete arrived, we had to move pretty fast because the concrete can set pretty quickly. We started pouring at the furthest corner against the house and I worked our way towards the end. As we went, we used a concrete vibrator, rakes, and a straight edge to level the concrete out. Immediately once it was leveled, we got on top of it with the bowl float to level everything out. Again, I really want to stress that you have to move fast because if the concrete sets, you're not going to be able to put a proper finish on it. Because we were planning to build a pergola, we knew we had to install two saddle brackets. We had previously marked the locations, which were right over the holes that were now full of concrete. We did this while the concrete was wet, so that the brackets would be set in place once the concrete cured. Because we live in Canada and there's snow and ice, we wanted to add a broom finish to the concrete slab to add traction in the winter months. When to start brooming can be a little bit tricky because you want the broom to slightly groove the surface, but you don't want it to dig into the concrete. My suggestion is to test a little corner of the pad until you're happy with the finish and then broom the entire pad. What I'm doing here is wet curing the pad. This is actually a step that's often missed, but is really important for the durability and strength of your concrete. You can start your wet cure once the concrete is safe to walk on without leaving any imprints. 
A full tutorial on how we did our concrete pad will be included in the description box below. So, we have a concrete pad. We have concrete! I'm actually really happy with how it's finished. I'm not going to say, I didn't tell this to Lindy before, but I wasn't sure how finishing was going to go. <laughs> but because I was cheap, I wasn't going to hire anyone. But, I mean, we did this on a budget ourselves. It looks pretty good. We had a couple rain storms and there's no ponding of water on this whatsoever. It's, it has a really nice grade. Um, yeah. So the saddle brackets are in. Those are where our posts are going. We figure like a couple of days of the pergola will be up completely. It's not a hard, hard build. Yeah. So now we just need a few days of sunshine so we can work outside. Or we just have to power through it because I want to, I really want to get this space done. <laughs> So, in the rain yeah you got to get her done sometimes. you're crazy and you just said do whatever rust says that so. is the opposite <laughs> now for the fun part where we actually get to build a pergola we had let the wood dry out for a while and now it was ready to stain we decided to stain the wood so that we had a consistent color and also add another layer of protection to the pressure treated wood we began by sanding some of the rougher pieces of wood just to get rid of any splinters or burrs we used a transparent stain and we added it right to the Flexio 2500. It's great because you don't have to do anything and it's just ready to spray. We found for the best results to applying this stain was to set the air power switch to low and the material flow control to two. One of the most important tips for when using a sprayer is to make sure you keep the sprayer moving and to minimize the amount of overlap you have. Once we had stain on all faces of our boards, we let it dry for 24 hours and then we could get to building the perk. Lindy's gonna be gone for the weekend, but we gotta get this pergola built. That means I'm in charge. She did give me a list of what she wanted. We'll see which ones I actually follow and if I have to make some executive decisions. But uh, yeah, so let's see how this goes and start building a pergola. The first step to build a pergola was to attach the ledger board to our house. At this time, we also installed our concealed joist brackets for our horizontal two by sixes or purlins. installed our post, making sure that we were level and square, and then added the top beam. Because I was working alone, I actually had to be a little bit creative and ended up using my tractor and my lawnmower to hold things in place as I built the pergola. added a couple braces to add some structure and stability to the frame. At this point when I started adding the purlins, you could really see the pergola start to take shape. To give the pergola a more modern look, we added a board to the front to finish it with nice clean lines. I 
to finish just in time for Lindy to pull up to see the finished pergola. <gasps> Look who's here, guys! <laughs> Look what Daddy did! I know! I he know! Got lights. It's so crazy. It's Mommy. very different than online, you know? Like you see in person. I'm glad we put this piece on. I feel like that looks really good. Yeah. So, what do you think? Yeah. Very impressive. Totally different. Totally changes the front of the house, yeah. eh? I agree. And then once you get some planters and a little swing. Oh, I'm excited. Like, I can envision it now with the couch here and everything. Some string lights. It'll be nice. It looks good. You did a good job. We couldn't be happier with how the concrete pad and pergola turned out. We promised a budget breakdown, so here is everything that we spent on the concrete pad. And here's everything we spent on our new pergola. What did you guys think of our budget-friendly patio DIYing? I was pleasantly surprised with this space when I got home, as you saw. And for 3500 bucks, I think we did a pretty good job. Pleasantly surprised? Is there no trust? <laughs> I knew you'd do good. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Our next video, we are going to be installing built-in planters, a swing, hopefully, styling this space, and putting a nice cover and garden around our gas line. So you're definitely gonna wanna watch that one too. Maybe even some custom string lighting. Ooh. Stay tuned, can't wait to catch you on the next one. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Let us know in the comments below, and as always, Hit the bell so you don't miss out on future DIY, renovation, and budget-friendly projects. Thanks so much for watching.